Rajesh Kuma is a passionate, enthusiastic, and energetic sustainability professional who holds a strong interest in exchanging experience with aspiring sustainability professionals and organizations working towards noble causes towards the betterment of society. He seeks to play an impactful role towards the betterment of society through passion, energy, and professional behaviors. Thank you very much, and I'm very happy to be part of this uh, presentation along with my co-participant. And thank you for the ability for this opportunity. Yeah. So today I will be joining the panel along with the two more speakers, mainly to for, to share my experience how water is centric for the whole ecosystem. And it is interesting to know that all these 17 sustainability goals is highly connected to clean water and sanitation. It is the center for the whole ecosystem. So together we will explore you know, how uh, it happens. Yeah. So just it's an icebreaker for the participant. Like, uh, what is the most important thing in your life? So if this is the point, you can just uh, visualize in your mind how it is getting connected in your day-to-day -day life, starting from the early morning to going to bed, all the uh, lifestyle and behavior, how water is uh, engaged with you. Yeah. Just we will discuss well in the question answer session on this part. And today, if you see, uh, when it comes to context, it is very clear. Uh, it's a shared agenda that requires a collective response uh, from each one, each and every one. And uh, now I like to share on uh, key highlights uh, of water importance, uh, which was in the global scenario well before uh, 2000 years ago. Like uh, this is script is in Tamil language, where it says Nirindri Amayad Ulagini, Yar Yar Kum Vanindri Amayad Ulag. So it is uh, it is uh, made by on a famous sign, uh, poet, uh, the excellence of uh, rain chapter. So uh, it is translated in almost uh, many languages, more than 47 languages. And when it comes to English translation, what it says uh, as a essence is uh, the duties of life cannot be discharged by any person. So without water and for water to replenish, we need the flow of water through rain. So both are inter interconnected. Rainfall is uh, interconnected to duties of human life. Yeah. So interesting thing is, no, it was said well before 2000 years, uh, which speaks on way of life, morality and ethics in day to day life. Yeah. So, and uh, again, if you see the recent connection, so very recently there were World Water Day celebration on 22nd March, uh, which is like every year there is a theme. And for this year, uh, Water for Peace, uh, creating ripples for a better future was the theme for this year. Yeah. I hope uh, this picture will connect to the current scenario and is self-explanatory. Like uh, many way, water is also connected to climate change as well. And you know, today, uh, you see the second picture also is self-explanatory, where if you see uh, many living organisms are dependent on behavior of our uh, human being. And you know, like uh, the second picture is explaining uh, how fishes in the aqua is now no, they want to come out due to the like, pollution from our anthropogenic activities. So I think we need to think of and take step in the right direction. Yeah. And I hope already our previous uh, speaker also explained on this topic. So it is very, very clear, even though water is the most abundant uh, thing in the earth. But if you see when it comes to usable form, where as a human being we can use, it is very, very limited. So I think we need to be very sensitive when handling water. And uh, there is an interesting index across the globe, which is called as uh, water stress index. And it says it ranks country like low, low to medium, medium to high and high and extremely high. So how this ranking is done? So they have a slab of water uh, requirement. If it is below 1000 cubic meter per capita per year, so it is considered as uh, water stress. And today, if you see many, many places of the globe, uh, it is in water stress or water scare area. So water is not uniformly uh, distributed across geographies. And even within the same country, uh, there is a regional differences there. So it is very, very interesting thing about water. At the same time, it's also make us alarm to handle water so that now our neighbor in other region or other geography will have access to water. Yeah. And this is something about... Uh, just an Indian region where, if you see, you know, many parts are under uh, water stress. 
and uh, this is some sample picture no like uh, water is the key resource for their daily life so only after getting water at the end of the day you know this is their hand and even very recently uh, i hope many people from india can able to able to know that and there's a global news also even if you see uh, like uh, recently in bangalore on part of south india there was some very huge crisis was there and previously i can remember before 3 years when i was in chennai Uh, many factories were uh, not operated because there was no water in the uh, chennai city very tough condition was there and people were to, uh, recommended to work from home or office were uh, shut down so like that no water uh, decides the day to day activity of everyone and this is some interesting thing you know, after uh, like enrolling for the session as a, a speaker this when i was traveling for last 3 days no uh, from my native to odisha for my workplace i was able to connect three states so i was exploring uh, how what is the current situation of uh, water how uh, it is connected so it is well evident no like uh, water is the key thing for everyone and if you see the uh, first photo i was checking in chennai where if you see you no know, like everyone was uh, willing to have a paid as paid water access uh, they think paid water is more hygiene and more quality that is the situation everywhere and second picture somewhere i have taken uh, in the like andhra pradesh there also it is very clear no people queue is very huge in terms of paid water access and surprisingly you no know, there were uh, counters with uh, free water free water pipes are there but today the people access is very very less only very few people are accessing that so i think it's give alarm for everyone no water when we say as a developed country or a global economy or developed nation so water should be available free for everyone so it's like they need to close their eyes in any for any tap they need to collect the water and drink and today that privilege is there i hope in many part of the world but if you see like country like india or many south uh, sorry asian countries uh, this is the practical ground reality so i hope this is, this will be interesting to know you know how there is a huge difference in terms of access to water yeah i hope this slide was well explained by my uh, elvis veta so i will not go deep dive into that uh, like mainly i will focus no to water if you see on broader context uh, if you want to see in a 360 degree approach it requires to maintain the water quality waste water management and focus on the water scarcity and mainly to main emphasis is uh, use efficient efficiently and uh, protection and retention of water in the ecosystem as our previous uh, speaker madhukar said so restoration is also equally important so it is like a chain effect where uh, everything is connected in this uh, goal so each uh, each action of this uh, sustainable development goal under water is everything is connected under this uh, sdg 6 yeah and uh, this slide is like a water cycle in an industry so this graphics if you see water Uh, it's a key component for any industry, and it is interacts with uh, every media. So water is interacts with air, and water is also below the industry. It will be there in the form of ground water below and uh, in and around. Again, the same water may, may be within or nearby industry as a water source. So as an industry, also much responsible, and uh, the where they operate, you no, know, it should be very much uh, vigilant and supportive to the nearby community to maintain the water quality in an in and around the society. so yeah this is one of the key business requirement for any industry whenever they are planning any business strategy they should keep in mind the water is a key component for them yeah and today one uh, like uh, practical scenario is 80% of waste water no it is getting released in the environment uh, without uh, treatment so i think it disturbs the natural balance or uh, water balance of the our earth and again it is impacting us back yeah i'll try to play a small a uh, video just
Hope again this video is self-explanatory. So now we have seen what are the concerns and practical difficulty what we have. So now I like to share from my practical experience what are the industry good practices uh, every industry is adopting. Yeah. So if you see uh, what you see in front of you maybe look like a concrete floor, but if you see under this uh, concrete uh, floor, I hope there is a huge capacity to save water, uh, which is around 27,000 meter cube. And you know, uh, one interesting thing, uh, it is part of industrial water risk assessment and water security. And uh, this water tank uh, is able to support out of 365 days, industry may operate around 220 to 250 days normally. And uh, almost 160 days, uh, this water tank is helping to run the factory. So this is how you no know, water security is much important. And many many times, uh, if you see many part of uh, Indian cities where there is a water less, every home they used to have a similar type of tanks, uh, mainly in location like Coimbatore, I have seen, where I used to study for university. And that will be the whenever they build home, they always build underground water storage tank to because many times now water is less available, and even people get water only once in fifteen days, once in uh, thirty days, like that. And you know one interesting thing is. Uh, uh, people used to select their life partner uh, uh, where there is a good water uh, source like that. That is also was there in previously. Whenever they select, it was also one deciding criteria whether the region where uh, he or she is going to live is having proper access to water. Because otherwise, you not know, their daily life will be in uh, trouble. Yeah. Yeah. This is again an interesting thing. Uh, this is called as a storm water pond, where if you see uh, whatever you have seen in previous slide is coming from all the roof buildings. So whatever is falling on land, it is collected, treated, and it is again, it is recharged back to the ground. So this water is not consumed by the industry. Uh, the industry is responsible, no? only few percentages they are able to take it back for their own purpose. And remaining person, they are giving back to the community or society where they operate to recharge the ground water. And these are like similar photographs from different industry. The credit goes to the industry. Like previously, it was from Michelin, and this is the factory, uh, current factory, TRL Prosaki, which is in Odisha. And again, this is the next is sewage treatment plant. So industry or any apartments, they divide water into mainly two categories. One thing is uh, domestic water from human needs. It is uh, treated in different stages after advanced treatment. It is in such a position where it can be used for gardening purpose uh, within the industry. And next, this is a wastewater management system. Uh, this is part of uh, zero liquid discharge concept is there in India and many places. Where whatever used in an industry, single drop should not go. They should treat it properly and they need to be used back either in production or uh, cooling tower or process like that. So these are the different stages where it has some primary treatment, again, filtration, again, RO system, ultra filtration, and finally, you know, the reject will go for evaporator. This is some basic scheme, but industry to industry, it will differ based on the appearance quality and the budget and advancement, what they need. And also uh, on the governing rules in the country which they operate. And again, now if you see water also support in promoting biodiversity. I have seen many industries as they have a natural pond uh, you know, or pond which they collect rainwater and restore. Automatically, it attracts a lot of biodiversity. This is one of the interesting thing uh, what we see. Yeah. And this photo I clicked very recently just uh, back to my uh, native village. If you know, I, I don't have the previous year photos, but recently what I have seen uh, before three years, I can see there was a complete desilting and activity going on, and the place was completely dry. And after a huge rain, you no, know, this time this uh, local pond is almost full. And I, when, when I discuss with the local farmers, they told no, it it can withstand for more than six months for their agriculture practice, and they are very happy about it. So this is one thing what I see in a community involvement and supported by government. You know, like these measures, it helps a lot. But in my forty years of no, this area I have never seen this before. Only last five years I can see this type of changes uh, in the particular community or in the particular geographic part. And this slide is from UNEP where it is self-explanatory. You know, like already we have seen this, it is it is more like a recap. So every human behavior also, you no, know, it is uh, it's challenges and there are like equally, you know, solutions are there. So as an individual person, we need to you know, act uh, responsibly to protect our water resource mainly. No, water is no universal component and it should be not uh, taken granted. 
it should be handled judiciously and holistically it should be approached and these are some common practices uh, just i want to take this opportunity uh, the main success of this presentation what i see uh, i think everybody also know uh, mainly working in that pattern uh, they have a strong vision so who are the people now seeing this presentation uh, already if you are practicing please sustain it and you also please uh, spread this message to your family friends and colleagues so there are some few only few examples or a few points where you can also add your own experience so main thing what we see is uh, every day you know the tap water uh, while brushing or our uh, many times we used to keep it open it, it will be running without any use of it so no it can be every minute we can say up to 15 liters and many time i have seen you no know, we used to open ended hoses we use for irrigation car washing lot of purpose so i think we need to make it in a innovative way some equipment we need to fit it either drip irrigation sprinkler or some type spray type of nozzles to avoid that and many time i have seen uh, many people uh, even uh, the shower time is uh, knowingly it's like unconsciously they used to spend more time on shower and way most uh, water is wasted so every month more than 4000 liter a month is wasted and we also whenever you built any home either you may be engineer or you may be any like any person you please always try to install a rainwater harvesting in your building and restore water resource nearby you today we, what we see one common thing we always try to plant a sapling as part of sustainability environment in shadow now we need to spread in other areas where we need to restore water resource nearby either as a group or uh, join with the government like that and one more important thing we need to educate and make awareness your family kids and co-workers everyone mainly you know this message is very very important because today we have technology today we have science today we have artificial intelligence lot of things are there but when it comes to individual behavior and education attitude this is the only area where uh, we need lot of improvement is much much needed so even i can see whenever i discuss with my kids uh, i have two kids in the age group of 5 years and 8 years so they always follow what the para teachers say at school they used to come back and tell today my teacher told to brush my teeth at night so this is one area what i see uh, education should start at school level or the awareness should start at school level where it will be continued till life long an important thing we need to appreciate the good practices around you like there are a lot of team members like today we are discussing with the organization called tribeity so similarly there are a lot of individuals organization working to towards sdgs or sustainability so we need to join when with them we need to spread what they do uh, to the nearby community and we need to you know, collectively we need to take responsibility that is one key thing another thing is like equipments you please uh, use in full capacity either it may be dishwasher or washing machine and main main point is uh, follow sustainable life lifestyle and behavior wherever you may be in different geography you may be in india or you may be in, uh, like europe or wherever you are if you are able to follow the sustainable lifestyle and behavior i hope it will be the best solution for uh, any type of uh, sustainability issues and mainly now today i think if you connect to the previous slides today we stand in queue and collect water or buy water tomorrow it may be a precious resource already it is in the in the it will be like a petrol or diesel no where it the, it will be rationalized access will be very limited and every person now will be limited the water availability so to avoid this type of situation we need to appreciate the nature uh, we need to work towards the benefit of nature and let make our uh, future secure that what the ca message which is a uh, an institute in india which work on various platform so we used as industry we use, every industry collaborate with them uh, and uh, take lot of uh, water saving measures yeah again i am coming back to the closing session where if you see initial slides we share it's a share agenda that requires a collective response